You need yeah. to smack really? it, everything. Write the car off, first practice. Endears you to the mechanics, Look I can tell the you. There's nothing like a good camaraderie, team bonding, rebuilding the car episode. Oh, That's what you know here, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We didn't study hard enough in racing car driving at school. So, wow. ladies and gentlemen, we've got underway. Now, as Stephanie was saying, you've got this, this wall of champions here. It's all about the exit. Give a big wave to those lovely marshals, of course, as well. We're there all day. It's all about the exit. So, if you don't get a good exit on here, obviously, that's going to hurt your run all the way down to the first corner. And it's a big break. It's a hard break because you're turning, braking at the same time. It's bumpy also. Yeah, and obviously you have different cars on the track, so Formula 1, they're going super late on the brakes. I think there's no car in the world that stops like a Formula 1 car, so if you are standing in turn 1, with the casino hairpin or somewhere else, you can really see the deceleration of these cars. Uh, it might be a little bit different in some of the GT cars, like the Porsches just came out. They don't slow down quite Brown. well, they move around a lot more, and you'll notice different driving Steven. lines, different styles. Steven. What the car, Formula 1 cars can do compared to some of the, the other categories are, are much different. So Oops. Really yeah. Unique <laughs> to the driving around here. Can I it really does. And the, yeah. the key to Canada as well is the curb usage. So we get different curbs here. Some you can use, some you can't. If we have a look, when the, the guys on the left hand side of the truck, if you have a good look there, you're all looking at the pit lane at the moment, and so you should. There's some brilliant machinery in there getting ready for the qualifying day tomorrow. But when we go through the corner in a moment, have a look at those different sides of curb. Give a big wave to those mechanics over there. There's wonderful marshals. Look at all those geniuses. I'm oh, doing podium celebration warm up. Have you been on the podium here, mate? Uh, I've been on the podium twice here. Been on the podium twice. Yeah, Show off. <laughs> That's brilliant. And it's, I mean, it's just one of those special moments on a Sunday. Get up there with the champagne. You've got all the boys and girls down below you poured in all the effort. It just makes such a good end to the weekend. Yeah, in, in all the categories, whether you're racing the 1600s, the Porsche, the Ferrari, or in Formula One, I think it's quite special to be on the podium anywhere. And that, that was a good example of an overtake there. The DRS overtake. That was a good to make that turn one. Yeah. So that's exactly what you want to try and do. So if you have a look on this left-hand side, first of all, there's a couple of things. One is grass. Grass does not stop a Formula One car very well at all. In fact, it's utterly terrible at it, but it looks really nice on TV. Look at the curve on the left here. You'll see that it's got a sawtooth ripple strip, then a flat section. So all the Formula 1 cars, the Porsches, every category will be looking to take as much curve there as possible. Reason being, it opens up this right-hander. If you look on the right here, you've also got different types of tarmac. Look at the dark section versus the light section. You can see it's been reprofiled right there. Now, that's something that you look on the track walks. Isn't it, Stephen? You go through that with the engineers well, before the weekend. Some action yeah, we were up here yesterday. So that's yeah. <laughs> You're going around the track, you're, you're working with the engineers, trying to spot the differences from this year, from last year, and seeing how you can get those extra tens that might mean a win. Yeah, exactly. And, and as you come off the track, you start noticing the differences. You might notice now we're on it now, it's much narrower than it probably looks on TV. The Formula One car has become emphasized, so everything becomes like a tunnel around this track. It's really, really tricky. It's a really good flow. There's a lot of walls, a lot of uh, risk reward corners. We've also got a lot of camber change as well, so that's where the, the road slants are, the inwards or outwards, and we've got the crowning also, because it's, it's essentially a street track here, it's just, this is just a normal public road, uh, it doesn't have to get raced on that much, but when you have a look on these corners on the right hand side, you can see just the level of camber, uh, particularly this left hander is completely what we call off camber, which means that it pushes the guys out to the wall, now have a look on this DHL wall sign out here, a little bit of a plug for the sponsors, oh, yeah. you'll be able to see all the tire marks, people brushing it up against this wall in the various categories, guys, particularly in one, they'll repaint that tonight, so have a look on the right here, there we go, there's some marks there, you can see where the cars are literally just grazing the wall, trying to eke out every single tent here. Thank exactly you. right, and it all starts on the entry, so if you do see cars hitting the wall there, if you think of the back on the replays, that first right hand there before the left is actually where things may have gone wrong. If you get a little bit too far, 
to get into the hall, so that's what we can see there, and I'm sure we'll see it again this weekend. Now, the other big theme of this track is that you're turning and braking at the same time, over time. So, here, for example, you're winding through, well, I almost knocked out post desk then, sorry. Uh, you're winding through here, high speed, but you've got to get back straight you got to the car, brake that. straight, because what happens if you don't brake straight? There's bad things in the race car. <laughs> And again, it all comes down to the curb usage as well. So if you have a look on the left-hand side here, you'll see a curb profile that's very similar to turn two. That left-hander, you can see that it's got a nice actual, it's actually the smooth curb here, so it's a different again, my apologies, it's not a sawtooth, it's a smooth curb, but you can see that they can cut that corner there. Now, Formula One cars will like that curb. It's low, it's flat, it'll be able to be written over. So this is, a, again, as you said before, risk versus reward, and I think that's where Hamilton has been so good for the past years. Yeah, he's been so good here. And as you're coming through this left-hander, what you're actually trying to do is keep it as far to the left as you can, because you're worried about power down. That left-hander is a start of a straightaway, essentially, all the way to the next section. So, if you can get through this right-hander flat out without lifting, you're on for a good lap. But if you are forced to lift off the throttle, which is very easy to do, if you're just a little bit offline, you do the lap time's gone. So, you can really notice that if you watch the way they move that corner. That's what they kind of look for. If you lift, you're in for a bad lap. Now, the other thing is here is that we have a thing in the, in the dash called the Delta. Now that's one of the things that in this track it becomes actually a bit of an issue because you've got such lengthy straights, you don't have too many corners. So the Delta, ladies and gentlemen, is a, is, a, is a number on the dash that tells you how well you're doing versus your next best lap. So in qualifying, if it says minus 0.5, I'm five tenths quicker than my previous lap. The problem is, is that when you see that as a driver, you go, I'm oh, five tenths quicker, this is awesome, and then you miss your braking marker and you crash. So it, it can be a little bit tricky as a driver because you do just get so much time to actually look at that and digest that, and you've got to be really mentally strong. Very much so, and on this track in particular, you kind of are in your own world for about 80% of it, 90% of it. You almost ate a bug there, that was Nearly. so close. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to point that out, that was, that was a near miss. <laughs> <laughs> when you, but it's true, you do, you do go out and you are in your own world, but then you come out onto the back straightaway. So you look at the delta typically on the back straight that we'll get onto later, and then you have the final chicane where you pretty much make or break the lap. So that is a very, very challenging part about the circuit. It's super tough to put this section together, and then again, this it's the last good. part yeah. where it, pretty much it's, it's all or nothing. Absolutely. Now this section here that we're slowing down to, because quite frankly, the truck is bloody tall, and we can only fit under a certain section of the bridge. But this is actually the braking marker. You watch out for that marshalling post on the left-hand side, ladies and gentlemen, or give it a big high five, whatever you takes your fancy. But this is the... Literally stole my thunder. But this is the braking section here for the Formula One car. So they're going to this incredibly dark point. Now just think, 300 kilometers an hour, you're trying to spot a braking marker in the dark there to be able to brake accurately and precisely for this corner here, which, Stephanie, is just so important because if you don't get the power down onto this next section, you're gonna struggle all the way down in the hairpin, all the way down to the last turn. That's, that's chaos. It's chaos, and you come out of that tunnel and then all of a sudden you're blinded by the light again, so it's a real flash. Oh, there we go, some good curb yeah, usage curb by the usage. truck driver. Look at that, that is brilliant apex work. Is he gonna use on the left-hand side? What do we think, ladies and gentlemen? Is he doing a good job? <laughs> yeah. yeah! There we go. Our the master own. Carl himself. Carl is our... Oh, look at that. Uh, yeah. Now you're showing off, Carl. Now you're showing off. That is brilliant work. Oh, see, there we go. He's got the horn and everything. Now, this is where Lewis Hamilton crashed. Uh, and we also see Antonio Giovinazzi had a crash here as well. Yeah. Is that a common place here? Does he just get a little bit too excited? What, what is happening? super tricky. Again, similar to the, the section before, where it's all about the entry. Usually, if you get the entry wrong, the second part comes at you quick. The sausage curves on the second part are very aggressive. You get those wrong, you're back on power, you're just, you're greedy. Your drivers, we're greedy, we want to get the power. I think Lewis got to it a little bit too quickly with a little bit of the wrong angle, and unfortunately you have the wall, things similar to Giovinazzi. It's, uh, it's a very tricky section, and when you're driving the limit here, it's, it's so tough to get right every lap. Let's talk about battling cars here, because in the race you often see, because the DRS detection zone is right there, ladies and gentlemen. What that means is, is that at that point, if a car 
is within a certain time frame, so less than a second off the car in front, they'll get DRS on the back straight. So, you can play a little bit of chess here. Now, there's a very famous highlight of Alonso v. Hamilton, probably one of the two most naturally smart drivers. Uh, one was overtaking the other, forgive me, I can't remember which one is which, but one broke just before the detection zone because he knew he's got me anyway, this is going to happen. But if I break, I get DRS back, and if I can fight into the hairpin, I'm going to have DRS in front of him down into the last corner. So this is that kind of actual smarts that you need as a racing driver to figure out and you can play that little bit of chess with them. And that was just an exceptional piece of driving whilst also steering and sliding a car at 300 kilometers an hour. Yeah, I think that's one of the things people who are not in the car don't realize that the driving part, at that point, you have to have it sorted. You're not thinking about that anymore. You're thinking about strategy like that. That's a brilliant piece of strategy. Say, oh, well, if I give up a little bit here, maybe I'll get more later. And you're always planning. It's, it's very much not just reacting to what's in front of you. It's planning and getting used to or, or expecting what's to come. And it's also, sometimes you don't want to always pass someone at the same spot. Pass someone at the same spot because then you become predictable and you go, oh, okay, I'll just block every time, then you won't be able to pass me. So it's it's counting your opportunities, figuring that out and calculating. Is that, is that something that you also do when you're in the car? I think, I think you have to, every driver has to. And obviously in Formula One, these are the best of the best. So catching someone by surprise isn't so easy because they, they do know you're coming. They, they've been doing this for so, their whole lives. Uh, so it's really quite brilliant. Formula One overtaking is quite difficult. So when you do see it happen, it's actually, it is quite a spectacle. Really good. And this next section here is previously known for actually almost breaking up in the tarmac so this person this really this particular spot they're on now uh was the one that used to break up back i think it was 2008 yes. i can't remember there 2008 that who's running laps on the outside let's have a look anyone super famous but i tell you what he's getting he's getting on to the back straight should we give him a big paddock club cheer ladies and gentlemen Yay! let's give him some encouragement there we go come on mate get onto the back straight you're almost there that's it Duck in for the slipstream or just hold on. Open it up. <laughs> Has anyone got some rollerblades? We can help him out. There's one of those things. It's always lovely to run the track in the evening, Steph. And it's also sometimes clears your head. You've had a big day in the office by the drive with racing the car. You want to just have a look at saying maybe we weren't so sure about the curves. Maybe you want to have a look at the hairpin in a bit more detail. It just helps the brain go through it. Yeah, I think Kimmy first to go for a drink, but, uh, you know. Kimmy, <laughs> 100%. You are so right. So right. He actually, to be honest, he just scooters around the track. Everyone else does a track walk. Kimmy's just like, bye, he's like, yeah, okay, all right, sweet, I'll come back later. Yeah, yeah, it does not surprise me one bit. And so as we were speaking on earlier, how you get time to think and look at your delta and just all the things that have happened in the lap. The lap's quite busy, quite intense. And now you have this massive straightaway and everything that could go wrong goes through your head. Everything that's going, you know, you might get excited, you might say, oh, that was not a good one. And then all of a sudden, you need to look down the straightaway and find your brake marker. And sometimes by then, you've lost your concentration. Some drivers even are like, what club am I going to go to when I've won the race? Uh, am I going to ask that girl out? Will, she, will I be enough in the world after that? Crazy things, yeah. It's amazing what you can think about. <laughs> drivers are horrendously insecure individuals. They're not good examples of human beings. So I can say that as one. We're just terrible, honestly. We need to do so much work on ourselves. But you can play so many games here as well. It's just that, again, it's that DRS zone. You, but what happens is sometimes the cars actually reach the, the maximum seat on either the engine, the gearbox. So sometimes you just pull up right alongside each other and then it's just a pure braking duel. It's a, it's a game of chicken at that point. And uh, yeah, I've played it many times. Last year on the last lap of race here, I was, I was one who went straight. <laughs> because that is what you do. You go side by side with somebody and you're always playing that game. You're trying to say, all right, I'm going to try and break later. Sometimes it works. Sometimes uh, you end up in the runoff and it, that's not so good. And that's also sometimes just knowing your opponent. And I think that's one of the things that the Formula One drivers, they always race 19 uh, races, sorry, 21 races a year. You've got 20 drivers on the grid. They know each other very, very well. They go through all this and they have a pretty good understanding. It's like we saw in Monaco with Lewis and Max behind. Now, Max is the last person in the universe you want behind you who's catching you in Monaco because you know if you present this the tiniest little gap, he'll have a crack. And that's sort of the Ayrton Senna. I guess, uh, adages where you've always just got to go for those gaps. Yeah, and you'll see different drivers with different styles. Obviously, Max is full attack. You might see some other drivers who are a little bit more, maybe cautious, but they might also be more planning. So, as drivers, there are different styles. And I'm sure if you are a fan of the sport and following it, you tend to notice these things. There's some drivers who will always be on the full attack. I think Lewis was almost like that younger in his younger days. It's a bit more calculated now. So, maybe because of experience and age, but there definitely is that element. And, and understanding that when you are racing, who are you up against? It's crucial. 
Absolutely. Now let's talk about this final corner one more time because it is just a daunting, daunting corner. How do you set up for it? What are you trying to achieve with the car? What, what, when you hit the brake pedal, what do you want to feel? You want to be able to make sure the tire's not locking up <laughs> go as fast as you can. Oh yeah, you probably want to feel the brakes working. I know that sounds kind of the obvious, but nice. what I'm talking about is that, you know, that weight transition where you get the first bite when you hit the brake pedal and you just know you've done a good job. Yeah, when you're qualifying around here, you get on the brakes, you really want to feel the car decelerate, but you're trying to brake as late as possible and come off the brakes as soon as possible because it's all about using the curbs here. The final chicane, you see the Formula One cars even using the sausage curbs. You see how much rubber is down on the inside there. You know, there's more curbs used from the Ferraris and the Porsches, but the Formula One cars are even using that. This right one is a nice one to use. When you see the curbs in the second one, it's usually when you see them off the Formula One champions. So keep an eye on that. Usually if they're cooking the second one, they've got enough speed Sometimes they end up on the wrong side of the wall. And there you go, just on, just on cue, the truck driver is using the curves absolutely brilliantly. So ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much brings us to an end of your Panic Club evening. We hope you've had fun. Let's give a big round of applause everybody for Stefan. And for Sam as well. Uh, thank you guys, it's very kind. We will see you tomorrow. We've got lots in store, lots of interviews, lots of fun. And uh, if you're lucky enough, you might even get a golden ticket and come on this just before qualifying. Thanks guys, cheers, have fun. Of the cars and then it's straight into qualifying. The fastest car is.